See, one, uh, one of the remarks that uh, white people have been making to us is that uh, they feel that Market Park is the last park which, the, which they have, which they can use on the southwest side. They point eastward and say they show a number of parks which have in the last 10 years turned uh, black and the white people have been afraid to use it, at least that's their perception. So if one compares uh, the movement uh, in the South 10 years ago of voting and using the facilities, that's one thing, but, but the whites seem to think that uh, these facilities, that they are the ones who are being deprived of the facilities. I don't think that's the issue at all. Uh, I've seen white people in Ogden Park. Uh, I've seen white people in Jackson and Garfield and all other parks and Grant Parks. Uh, they have distorted this issue because of uh, a kind of inflammatory, incendiary situation which they think they can capitalize on by saying this is the, uh, this is the Alamo and uh, we won't let the niggas come here. We won't let the Jewish uh, white nigger lovers come here. But I'm saying that uh, the American Constitution must stand. I cannot stand up in any park in Chicago and say that any ethnic group does not have a right to come. So we are simply saying that if I cannot, or Chicanos cannot, uh, no other ethnic group can. You know, you can't stand up in a public park and say blacks can't use it, or Lithuanians can't use it, or Jews cannot use it, or Irish cannot use it. The park facilities are paid for collectively by the taxpayers of this country and everyone has a right. Now, if they want a personal park, they can go somewhere and buy it and put post-it on it, and no one can use well, it. Well, as a practical matter, how did your march on uh, Saturday uh, further the goals which you outlined for that march? Uh, they f did not further the goals. It was a kind of ridiculous uh, situation wherein we felt it was a kind of conspiracy. A professional policeman who led us into a kind of trap. Uh, we feel the police intentionally uh, set the situation up in hopes that someone would be seriously injured so that the judge would be made to look like he made a, 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 an error, uh, to make the judge look bad, to make the Martin Luther King Jr. movement look like they led people into some kind of slaughter. Uh, no professionalism was, uh, was used in that particular situation in that the people who began to throw rocks, if they'd given me a badge, I could have arrested a dozen of them. Uh, if uh, they had taken the initiative and used mace as one of the devices used to subdue uh, mob people who are participating in a mob, uh, if they had used um, tear gas even in those crowds at one corner, you know, it could have been easily broken up. They didn't use a billet stick. You were there, you didn't see not one policeman take a billet stick and hit anybody or make anybody put a brick down. You are reverend yourself and quite a few of your uh, uh, colleagues are reverends, uh, uh, Dunlap Turner. And from your experience, why do you think uh, the whites reacted so violently towards your march? Uh, the whites have reacted that way. Uh, they think they have won major victories against Dr. King in 1966. And the city let this stand. The mayor laughed at it in his kind of uh, ambivalent way. When Dr. King died, the mayor uh, hailed him as one of the greatest leaders of the last two decades, uh, the last uh, two or three centuries. But when he was living, the same mayor said Dr. King had no business in this city and some of his black and white colleagues in the city council. But a minute, uh, immediately uh, when Dr. King was crucified up on the Lorraine Hotel in Memphis, Mississippi, in Memphis, Tennessee, pardon, uh, uh, the mayor immediately called the city council together, declaring the mayor as one of the greatest leaders this country has ever produced. And we see that uh, the same kind of situation, uh, they call him an outsider. We are not outsiders. We've lived here, worked here, all, everything we have is here. We are also, sir, you might be Lithuanian immigrants, we are refugees from Mississippi. We are refugees from Alabama and Virginia. The reason we are here is because Ku Klux Klan and people who attacked and chased us and fixed it in those situations so we couldn't get jobs and housing. So we came to this little Mecca to try to make a way 
and immediately finding that Chicago is more racist than any place that we left in, in the South. Well, that's one of the points which I like to uh, want to raise in this interview. It would appear to me that, for example, the ethnics in Market Park area and your movement have quite a lot of in common. They have been refugees from, uh, from persecution and they have been discriminated against the blacks in, in their particular way and also the whites have been, uh, the white immigrants have been discriminated by the Anglo-Saxons in, in Chicago. As one example is the Polish, they have been raising the issue that there is a, a large percentage of Poles in Chicago, but they constitute a very small percentage in, in, in important industries like uh, communications or executives or so on and so forth. Well, that is a hard part to understand. As we went to the uh, police headquarters on 11th and State, uh, we found people coming in there who almost needed interpreters to get their children out of jail. And uh, it is a hardening thing to see, to understand that we knew that people had to be refugees because they could hardly speak English. And to say these people were urging their children, who are first generation Americans, to attack other Americans who only attempt to use the public thoroughways, the streets, and the parks. Those people have a right to their homes. Now, if I enter their homes or step on their porch, they have a right to shoot me or kill me or whatever. But as long as I'm using the streets, as long as I'm using the parks, those people uh, don't have a right to attack us. They don't have a right to molest us. They don't have a right to throw all this kind of bricks and incentives uh, uh, at us, different kind of obscenities. And, and the, the incentive of those people in that area, they've been using the incentive that the mayor will protect us. The mayor has not spoken out on the issue. Uh, Mr. Leon Finley, Executive Director of the Woodlawn Organization and one of the black leaders most active in seeking to promote racial integration, has called the march, quote, ill-advised and says it was not clear whether marchers wanted to get, a, get out of the march. You were not supported by uh, the Woodlawn Organization, you were not supported by uh, Jesse Jackson's Operation Push, and you were not supported by the Urban League. Uh, why don't these people not support you? Uh, I don't understand Mr. Uh, Finney's motives, uh, the statements that he made in this paper that you hold here. It's uh, uh, a Chicago Tribune. Right, uh, right. The statements there... Tuesday, uh, July 20th. The statements there are un-American, you know. Uh, the statement that he made coming from a Negro. I don't know where he was born or raised, but uh, those kinds of statements I wouldn't expect to come from an immigrant or a refugee. Now, I'm saying that an immigrant may come from Lithuania or Romania, where the Russians are pressing, uh, pressing people and beating them behind the Iron Curtain. But what's wrong with immigrants? Nothing. I'm the, saying... I, I, the, the immigrants and the blacks have been working back to back in many menial jobs. And, and fought it, the wars. And they fought the wars for the country. So it, the country, it would right. seem that you should have a particular uh, soft heart for the immigrants. We do. But I'm saying... Uh, a person is Mr. Uh, Finney, as you saying, you know, trying to explain what he said in the paper. I don't understand him because I'm saying that no one would make those statements who come here and take the oath and believe in the country and want to be a citizen. Because I said, regardless if you came from behind the iron curtain or the cotton curtain, the issues are the same. Freedom. Now, we, we were refugees running away from the Klan in Mississippi, and we went back to fight on the civil rights front, and we won little rights. But uh, here's the same issue where people say you cannot use this part because you are black.